going on guys? Jake Adams here and um, I am so thrilled to bring to you a very special aquarium. This tank has been in the making for two or three years and it is packed with some of the rarest fish and some of the most exotic corals. Um, and I am really lucky to I've been uh, involved in this tank in several ways and so have many of my friends um, from setting it up to maintaining it to stocking it and uh, so thankfully I have my good friend Joe Caprata who's here and who's going to tell us uh, all about about this tank so I can ask him the questions and he can give us the answers. So uh, without further ado, here is the tank and here is Joe. How you doing everyone? Good to see you again. Um, well, the tank kind of speaks for itself. It is a 300 gallon tank. The product of the imagination of, of a private client, we'll call him Mr. F, and Sam Slavuski from Wetworks. After doing installations for 20 years, this is as good as it gets. Um, I have been maintaining it for the last year. Um, I do uh, take a lot of pride in it, as though it's almost my own tank. A lot of these pieces did come from me. We'll talk a lot about the tank, the plumbing, the design, the mechanics, and of course the livestock in here, which is some of the, the best stuff. A lot of these things, like Jake mentioned, has been written about already on reef builders, like this spectacular Canthophilia. Well, it's an Ellos tank, fully minored, chamfered edges over here, super polished. There's not a bubble in the glass, optically clear glass. Um, I just, I mean, the tank is just like museum quality for glass. You just, you look at it and you think it's acrylic, but it's it's glass. It looks so crystal clear. Yeah. Really impressive. Do you know the rough dimensions of it? Uh, actually, I never needed to know the rough dimensions. <laughs> so I would say six feet by maybe 28 by 28. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, reasonable. Right. Maybe a yeah. touch touch higher. Okay, yeah. so it's an Alos glass tank. Yeah. And what is this funky light you have on here? It's just like one solid luminaire. It's not even a light fixture anymore. It's a luminaire. What do you, what do you tell me about that? This is the Acro Optics light, which I have never even worked on before. Um, the light has been great, fully programmable, a whole bunch of channels. We actually have it almost as three in this individual panels, so we can adjust the lighting. This is a high par area on the right, which we're putting most of the SPS core. Then this is a medium light over here, more of your LPS, and then over here is lower light. Uh, most of the kind of filters are over here. Anything that shows a little bit of light shock, we move it over to the left and usually a rebound. Um, making the zones for all those different types of corals, it's really, it's, an, it's a must, right, yeah. for this type of aquarium, because there's so many different corals. Yeah. And that's the thing, he didn't want an SPS dominant tank, he wanted a little bit of everything. So to figure that out, this was uh, a lot of foresight on the, on the designer's part, and it's worked out, played out perfectly. Very cool. Now, something that might not be quite obvious is that this reefscape is actually kind of radical because there's technically no live rock inside, right? Correct. Well, yeah, there's a couple of small pieces maybe under some of the, the corals to hold them up, but but for argument's sake, there's really no live rock in so, here. So it's a ceramic reefscape. Okay, so tell us about the ceramics inside. Yeah, it worked out really perfectly. I was a little worried that, you know, not having live rock in here, we might have some weird issues, possibly some leaching of, say, aluminum, or not having proper surface area that the you know, traditional live rock would provide for you. But so far, it's been uh, it's, it's been really great. And now you can never even tell that it's not. And so one of the benefits is that it's um, it's pretty much all cemented together. It can't really move. There's maybe a little wiggle and some small Correct. things. Yeah. It looks a little weird at first, right? Because it's, uh, you know, kind of whitish. But, yeah. but now we can see there's a lot of coralline yeah. growing on uh, every corner. If I had said anything, you would just think it was, yeah. it was live rock. You could really see over here how it's just glued perfectly on that edge. Uh, the only issues we've had is trying to catch fish out, you can't move anything. And if coral falls, you have to kind of get in there and get creative and like an acrobat trying to get in there and get it out. So we've taken a good look at the tank, we've taken a good look at the light, we've taken a good look at the reefscape. This tank is actually really, really quiet. And I believe that there's a lot of magic hiding underneath. So uh, why don't you pop open all the panels and then we'll just go cycle from one side to the other. Sure. Joe, you have just opened Pandora's box on one hell of a reef aquarium. 
some food management system. Holy crap. Well, I guess um, just, you know, walk us from right to left and tell us what's happening in here. Sure. So it's a custom designed MRC sump um, with some really cool stuff like the Avast Marine spyglass reactors, removable acrylic top. We run GFO and carbon in there. It's just overflowing gently. Uh, the Vectra L1 return pumps are silent. Don't mind that little zip tie right there. I just have to replace a suction cup. Zip ties are our friends. Yeah. It looks like yeah. a little, um, like a spectra pure. Is that just an AP? It's a liter meter. Uh, UPLC2 is so what that is. The top off? Yep, one top off. Cool. I really like the window and um, the rounded corners on the sump. It looks so modern. I've never seen a sump like that ever. Yeah, I think his inspiration was the Space Odyssey 2000. Okay. Yeah. And then we've got a Royal Exclusive Protein Skimmer. Yep. Do you know what model that is? Uh, I think it's the, is it the Bubble King 250, I believe it is. That sounds about right. We've got an um, automatic waste collector with even like a little carbon pad to keep it nice and not smelling bad. I love those tight fitting lids on the sump as well. Got some accessory fans to help the, with temperature control. Yes, there's no chiller on this. So those are programmed to turn on one at a time and the temperature hits 78 and then 79. They do a really good job. Very cool. And then um, I see there's a lot of valuable fish in here. So this is um, uh, a rare addition, I guess, to a reef tank nowadays is the uh, the dual UV sterilizers. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, these are 18 watt tubes each, uh, built by MRC Custom Unit. And it's got the same uh, matching rounded corners. Oh yeah. Super, super cool. Yeah, you see that theme throughout the entire build. And then you have two Pax Bellum Arid Ketomorpho reactors. Yep. Yep. Do you have um, Do you have a manifold like feeding a bunch of different things? Yeah. So there's one of the L1 pumps over there actually runs up one leg goes up to the aquarium, the other one comes around and tees off, does both of these, and goes into one of those returns, and then the other side of the tee will go through the UVs and dump back in over there. And then the other leg off that common manifold goes and feeds two gate valves that allows us to con precisely control the water level inside the carbon and the GFO uh, fluidized reactors. Very so cool. it's a lot of networking off of one pump, but the other L1 is just fully dedicated to the aquarium flow within the aquarium. Very cool. Let's scoot over to the left, and uh, we have another tank over here, and I just assumed it was for top-off, but it's actually um, for water changes? Oh, yeah. Check oh, my place. goodness. This whole thing slides out? Oh, that's crazy. So this is filled with water. Hold on, comes out. But it's just enough to actually add our salt. There's a big Tunzi circulation pump in there, which we turn on. And that will just provide all the mixing. And then the L1 with the flip of a switch fills up the sump. The water chain. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get this straight. Ah. You have a $450 controllable DC pump to return your water flow, your water? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's nuts. Only the best. All right, okay. Yeah, so that, what we do is we open up a valve and it's takes water out of the top of the aquarium and sends it off into the household plumbing. And at a certain point, we would shut that valve and then fully evacuate this water storage tank and replenish that height in there. So it's just a matter of valves and flipping the switch after we have the salt. There's no buckets, no This must be so nice for you to have purified water made on site. Oh, yeah. You just mix it on site. Oh, yeah. What's the second uh, chamber for? This is a first priority overflow uh, storage for the, the top one. Uh, so it should uh, both be down in this call for water. This gets priority first over this one. Okay, so you've got a complete dosing center here with uh, some peristaltic pumps mm -hmm. and uh, some dosing ca containers. And uh, what's in the dosing containers? So this is Core 7, uh, Triton Core 7, which we've been running since the beginning. Actually, we were running the base elements, and then when Core 7 became available, we, we switched it over to Core and this 7. this is the Triton method, not the other method. This is correct. This is the Triton method. Because we're running ketomorphone or reverse photo period in the Pax Bellums, there's enough nutrient export going on to keep the levels low, because the Core 7 provides essential elements to support the needs of macro. And um, so these are the additives straight out of the bottles, not diluted or anything. Correct, correct. And how much do you dose? Uh, right now we're dosing 30 mLs a day of, on of each part? Of each part, yep. yep. Of each part. So it's number one, number two, and actually three A and three B are combined, so we dose 60 mLs a day on this one. Okay. Which is really the same. And then this one's just a little bit of acro power. Oh, very, yeah. very cool. 
So Joe, thanks for showing us, you know, how this tank operates and some of the basic elements. Um, but uh, what's involved with basically upkeeping an aquarium like this? Sure. Well, as you can imagine, with a fish load like this and the type of high protein food they eat, nutrient levels do do build up. So I'm constantly employing Roofos, uh, water changes when needed. It is a tried method tank, so with the nutrients being processed by the Pax Bellums, the protein skimmer, the GFL, and the carbon, and the minerals being replenished every day by the Core 7, the water changes almost become redundant. But again, since they're so easy to do, we have so much confidence in our, our source water with Tropic Baron Pro Water and weekly ICP tests that we're doing here, I'm free to do water changes as needed. So this is the point where I just realized that I can't see any water pumps inside the tank at all. Ah. How is the water flow provided in this tank? Well, there's one uh, L1 running independently. It, there's a return on the top, and then another one, Sam had plumbed it, and it's hidden in the rocks. There's a return right here. No way. Yeah, I call it rocks, but they're not really rocks. There's a return right there. There's another return right back here. Oh, and cool. then the real magic real magic is the two tonsies that are buried in here and the wiring is hidden as well. Uh, there's one right in that back over there. In fact, it just kicked out a little bit of detritus and stuff that the fish are trying to eat. See it over there. And the other one is buried in the back and it's just shooting up through this little cavern that's right over there. It, the tank is also like really, really clean, you know, and despite having so many fish, I don't see a single speck of algae, the corals, you know, you know, all appropriate color. And the other thing that's really cool is you see a lot of great color definition, but it's not Windexy blue, right. right? It doesn't look like the color of your shirt. It looks pretty natural, you know, reef style, but, uh, but yeah, it's just not like uh, just blown out. Still really, really great color balance. It's time to look at some of these fabulous corals and fish. Um, again, I, it's so cool that you've uh, zoned the aquarium with uh, basically the high energy uh, acros and stony corals, SPS on the right, and some of the LPS on the left. Do you want to point out uh, maybe just some of the smaller zones within it? Sure. So uh, the client is an active chalice and mushroom collector. Um, so we've, we've kind of taken like blastomuses and created one area. The chalices, we put in one area. Mushrooms are kind of congregated to this area over here, although sometimes they break off and they spread around to this area. But traditionally, this has been the chalice area, the low light, super high glow area. And then um, I've got a lot of familiar friends here. There's the uh, Splatoon chalice right there. That was actually at one of my local fish stores several months ago. There's the, uh, the Bennett's hogfish that I uh, came across in uh, Cairns, Australia. There's also the Abeya angelfish who just decided to take a nap. He's been out this whole time, <laughs> but I'll cut it in with some B-roll. Um, those are some of my super favorite fish. And then one fish that's on my, uh, kind of my holy grail wish list is this Claire's fairy grass. It's just one of those that's just from so far away um, that you just never ever see them. So it's really cool to see them in this tank. What about some of the corals? What are some of the really cool corals in here? You, you alluded earlier to this acanthophilia, but this thing is just insane. Yeah, actually, you know the story probably better than I on that one, because that, that one got some reef builders love a while back. I don't remember who he got that one from. That was before I, uh, I got involved with the aquarium. Very cool, and then like a stripy uh, Potabasia or Sanolilitha. That, that, those green splashes are super, super neat. The home record. That's a Jason Fox home record. We got a home record in the house. Mm -hmm. A bunch of various acros, a big purple milka. Nice classic green polyp leather coral. Oh yeah, man, it's so cool. Kojiwa is one of my favorite ones, the pink nephia, which came out a couple years ago. We've been propagating that. And a giant space invader pectinia right there. Yeah. Very cool. Oh man, this cluster of the um, uh, Australian scolies is just on another level. It's just a bunch of master and UFO scolemias all grouped together. Very, very cool. Man, this tank is just beautiful, whether you're close up or far away. What are some th some things you just want to mention about this, uh, this tank, the kind of things that I wouldn't even think to ask, and uh, maybe one or two things that the tank has taught you? Um, well, balancing the needs of a reef aquarium versus balancing the needs of a private client sometimes don't mix well. Uh, for instance, when somebody has collectoritis and they want all the corals, traditionally we'd give them a lot more space. Like you notice how tight everything is, there's not a lot of room for these things to grow, especially like the Montecora back there. Now those things are gonna need 
two feet across in another year or two, especially running the system with the way we're running with the growth that we see. So putting them all in in the beginning works, but leaving enough room for them to grow, that's gonna be a challenge. Another thing I wanna point out, which um, is really cool, is having a full blanket lighting uh, coverage on the aquarium. Uh, in a lot of regards, it's almost like T5 lighting. It's one of the benefits of T5 lighting is that it covers the entire footprint. Unlike spotlighting, this kind of bounces light all around the coral, so the energy of the coral isn't just focused on the top, it's kind of hitting all around. I think that's played into the success. Uh, also having modern equipment like DC pumps, there's very little heat that's being put into the aquarium, and that was a big thing with Sam and the client. They did not want to deal with a chiller for obvious reasons. Exhausting the heat, the space issue. So going with the DC pumps, the, the LED lighting allowed them to not need a chiller. So of course we've got to give some shout outs for this, this aquarium. Uh, the biggest shout out goes to Sam Sabuski. Uh, without him, this tank would be here. Uh, Reefworx is his company, and you can look this tank up on their Facebook and on their website for Reef 301. Uh, another shout out goes to the aquarium manufacturer, Elos, out of Italy. Everybody's heard of them. Uh, Aqua Optics for the custom lighting. Uh, I do not have a stand manufacturer, but this is a custom, beautiful stand. So if anybody's interested, obviously you can get in touch with, with Sam regarding that. Uh, my company, Meat Corals, and Manhattan Aquariums, doing the service, providing some of the corals. And uh, of course, Rico's for bringing this all to you. You probably wouldn't know this was here if it wasn't for them. So, you know, hit us up in the comments. Don't forget the acrylic. Oh, how can I forget MRC? Without MRC, this tank wouldn't be filtered. Uh, Raj over at MRC, uh, Ecotech, providing the pumps, Pax Bellum. Um, yeah, I think I'm also basically covered on that. And Dave Bobman. Dave Bobman actually has helped me out quite a bit on this as well with programming and whatnot. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one.